This table, which is 20.1 in the Klein 3rd edition textbook, reviews preparations of carboxylic acids, ways we can synthesize carboxylic acids from other starting materials. This first reaction is ozonolysis, or oxidative cleavage, of an alkyne, which gives two carboxylic acids uh, after workup with water. And if the R groups are the same, we just get two equivalents of the same carboxylic acid. And this is the most preparatively convenient way to make carboxylic acids this way. Primary alcohols can be oxidized using Jones conditions all the way up to carboxylic acids, and this is a convenient preparation. If you're starting from a primary alcohol with a CH2 group here, these strongly oxidizing conditions convert that OH group into a CO2H group. And one thing to note here is that the carboxylic acid is quite an oxidized functional group, right? This carbon is in the plus three oxidation state. And so it makes sense that oxidation is one way to synthesize it, right? We can start with an alkyne or an alcohol, which are more reduced functional groups, we would say, and oxidize those groups up to carboxylic acids, which are relatively oxidized, kind of one step away from CO2, if you think about it. Alkyl benzenes can also be oxidized to benzoic acids, and we saw these conditions in the context of multi-step synthesis of substituted aromatic compounds. So for example, we can take isopropyl benzene and treat it with these strongly oxidizing conditions, Jones conditions, in fact, and we end up with the benzoic acid. The cool thing about this reaction is that it will work as long as the benzylic position has at least one hydrogen atom. So almost any alkyl substituent here will get chewed up to a carboxylic acid as long as we have an H at that benzylic position. Here are two more methods for the preparation of carboxylic acids. We'll have more to say about this first reaction a little bit later on in this unit, but for the time being, just to put it under the umbrella of ways to make carboxylic acids, I wanted to mention it here, the hydrolysis of nitriles. This is, on some level, a nucleophilic acyl substitution reaction, which we'll touch on a little bit later, but it involves the treatment of a nitrile with acid, very strong acid, in aqueous conditions, water, with quite a bit of heat. And this gives the carboxylic acid and ammonium as a byproduct via an amide intermediate with an NH2 group linked to a carbonyl group like this. And this requires very, very vigorous conditions, high temperature, long reaction times, quite a bit of heating, um, because the nitrile is rather difficult to, to hydrolyze for reasons that we'll see a little bit later, but it does work. Acid, water, heat will convert a nitrile into a carboxylic acid. A second method to prepare carboxylic acids takes advantage of Grignard chemistry and the fact that CO2 is a fantastic electrophile. So this allows us to convert an organohalide, Rx, ultimately into the corresponding carboxylic acid where the carboxyl group, CO2H, has replaced the halogen. So let's take a look at how this works. We know we can make a Grignard reagent by treating an organohalide with magnesium metal, typically in an ethereal solvent like THF or diethyl ether. And that Grignard reagent is nucleophilic at the R group. Carbon dioxide, CO2, is a great electrophile at the central carbon. Think of it as a carbonyl carbon twice, right? It's a carbon sharing two carbonyl type oxygens with two CO double bonds. So it's a great electrophile. Treatment of a Grignard reagent with dry ice results in nucleophilic addition of that R group to CO2, giving a carboxylate an anion. Treatment of that anion with acid will protonate it and give the neutral carboxylic acid product. So this is a pretty cool way to make carboxylic acids starting from an organohalide. If you can get a halogen atom X connected to some organic group, we now know a way to convert that halogen atom into a carboxyl group through this approach. We'll soon see that among all these different heteroatom substituted carbonyl compounds, carboxylic acids and carboxylic acid derivatives, carboxylic acids themselves are generally relatively unreactive with nucleophiles. The fact that they're acidic creates some problems if we want to react them with a nucleophile, and so they're relatively unreactive with nucleophiles and unreactive overall. But this slide shows you three important reactions of carboxylic acids that we do want to keep in mind. The first is reduction. If we can synthesize carboxylic acids through oxidation, it kind of makes sense conceptually that we should be able to react them re via reduction. And reduction of a carboxylic acid with lithium aluminum hydride produces a primary alcohol through the addition of two equivalents of hydride, 
to the carboxylic acid is one way to think about this. And this gives primary alcohols RCH2OH, where the former carbonyl carbon becomes a CH2 group in the product. It's possible to selectively reduce carboxylic acids in the presence of ketones and other carbonyl containing functionality using borane tetrahydrofurane complex, which is commonly abbreviated as BH3THF. And I won't get on into the details on this reaction. It's just a really nice way to chemoselectively, as we say, reduce the carboxyl group to a primary alcohol. So it's the same reduction that we see in the case of LAH, although you can imagine if we tried to use LAH in conjunction with this substrate, the ketone group over here on the left would also be reduced. These borane conditions avoid reduction of the ketone, selective reduction of the carboxylic acid group occurs. And then the third reaction type, which we'll look at in more detail later on in Chem 2312 LS, is peptide coupling, which converts a carboxylic acid into an anode. Extremely, extremely important reaction type in biochemistry that occurs through a biochemical mechanism that you'll get very familiar with in your biochemistry courses. In the laboratory, we take advantage of these electrophilic peptide coupling reagents. DCC is one of them, and there are many, many others, and these ultimately cause the loss of a molecule of water from the reactants under these reaction conditions producing an anode. So this is a kind of substitution reaction where the OH group in the carboxyl or carboxylic acid is replaced with the NHR group here. This is known as peptide coupling because an old school term for the amide functional group is peptide. 